then we can actually commoditize our data and just sell it back to you and tell you that you can use it X amount of times, right? We can do blind escrow. I mean, it really, it really opens up possibilities for us to be in control of our information and our data. Um, and for community-based organizers to be in control of, of our data. Um, because or what makes organizers so powerful is that they can map out an entire community, right? You sit down with a good organizer and they can map out a, an entire community and tell you about the last 20 years, right? It's all up here. And so when you, when you lose an organizer, or when, you know, it, we're not taking advantage of our organizers the way we should be, is, is I guess what I'm trying to say. Um, and so, that, so that's why I get started. I can actually talk about that forever, but I'm not gonna talk about that. But that's how I got to MIT, to really, you know, to really try to figure out how we can get in front of the eight ball. Um, with this technology and and what I've realized and I'm just going to throw out a few things um, is that as Fox was saying this mirrors our society right this doesn't bring the social media um, the internet doesn't necessarily bring up the best parts of us right so if your society is segregated it'll probably be segregated right if your society is racist it'll probably be racist the huge white flight that happened in MySpace to Facebook is an example of this, right? So Facebook has, and I don't know if it's currently true now, Fox would actually maybe able to tell me, but faith, there was a while where Facebook and MySpace had the same amount of users. But Facebook was like, oh, Facebook's the shit, it's growing, it's amazing, and, and it was. But MySpace was still very much active. But when you heard people talking about MySpace, they would say things like, it's the ghetto, right? It's full of child molesters. No, it just didn't reach a tipping point with EDU, right? Or with, with colleges. Because Facebook was started in Harvard. The way it got to its tipping point was it went from Harvard to Ivy Leagues, to EDUs, then to the public, right? So, so that's why it was, that's why it didn't have supposed, you know, child molesters or whatever, although, hmm. Um, we, <laughs> Penn State, we, um, <laughs> but, um, you know, so, so you, so it, it doesn't fix racism, right? Like, like it, it definitely continues to mirror our, we make it what it is. Um, and, and in certain ways it could potentially make us more invisible. And I think like exactly what I was seeing with Fox and like, I had to take a picture of that chart because that chart will be shown like that we're 30 points dumber than the French, like just, I mean, you know, like th that's the type of stuff, right, that, that, that you realize and, and see what happens. So now I can be a white woman in my avatar and you, you know, like, I mean, so, so what, what happens with that? Um, but there's a few things that, that I realized in, in doing certain experiments and, and I wanna say that the experiments that I did were using very basic SMS like JavaScript technology, which is all basic cell phone technology. Although I do feel that with the expansion of mobile and of smartphone mobile and with that becoming more accessible, we do have more opportunities. Um, but I wanted it to be able to work on every, you know, on every type of phone so that if you didn't have a smartphone, you wouldn't get, um, it, you know, eliminated. And we saw, we worked with a high school group in Brooklyn um, and we had with Prison Moratorium Project. And um, we, they were organizing a end of the year for their high school, like talent show, you know, where they were gonna call for a nonviolent summer. And so we started having them organize with their cell phones. And within two weeks of going out to get people to sign up for the talent show, they had signed up 432 people. Now, any organizer knows if you send out a kid with a clipboard, you will not get those <laughs> numbers, right? You will not get those numbers. Not even if you said out me and Naj together. <laughs> uh, look, Naj is like, give me a challenge. Um, but but what, so what, what you saw was that this technology, people like using it, right? A lot of the kids said that they felt very comfortable. As a matter of fact, one of the kids, when we showed them, now, and this is very basic, right? This isn't anywhere near what Fox was talking about. But when we showed them the short code, they were like, oh, like this is what Hot 97 has, or like we have what Hot 97, you know what I mean? There was a very novelty moment to it, which I think is also very important in the selling of this. Um, and so as we're going around and doing these experiments to see if organizers could actually use cell phone um, and other types of technology to better organize, we realized a few things. And the first is that 
technology currently removes our barriers to creating media. And what that means is that we can create our own shows, right? We can create our own commercials. I can create a commercial to send specifically to Naj to tell her to come and meet me at a place, right? Like, mm -hmm. like if, if we think of how we can run with a YouTube, right, or a Vimeo or an Instagram or, or any of these technologies, we're able to produce with them, which I think is, is very important. The second thing is that it removes barriers to distribution. So while you, know, you can create a short code and you can own one privately, you can also just go to an open source network and even though it'll have a little advertisement on it, you can get your own you know, text begway to 70376, mm -hmm. right? You can get your own. And so you can start distributing your, you know, whatever you want, right? Your flyers, your manifesto, um, right? You can start distributing that far and wide without the cost of printing, right? Without the cost of going into a recording studio, without the cost of, right? It, it completely removes those types of barriers. Now, the final thing that we discovered, which is what's most exciting to me as an organizer, is that it's almost an authentic catcher. So like, if you actually don't have networks, these, this technology will not work. Because if people actually don't trust you, if they don't see you as a tastemaker, if you're not, it's, you know, if you're not in somehow relation with them, whether that's you know second, third, or fourth, you know, if there's not a, if you don't feel that trust, you're not going to open it, mm -hmm. right? You're not going to respond. You're not going to, you're not going to watch the YouTube video, right? And you might not go from the YouTube video to the website, right? You, so what you see is an organization like the Design Studio, like. BYOP would actually be able to get as much activity mm -hmm. on their site as the national NAACP. And that's because they have actual relationships here in Boston, right? They have actual numbers of people who will pass it on, who will mention it as a church, more so than a lot of these national groups that actually hold this space for data gathering within our communities, yeah. right? And so for me, I became very excited about that because of my frustration that I was feeling with our, the state of, of, community, of community organizing. Um, so I, I guess I'll end, um, or actually th there's a couple other things that I wanna talk about um, that before I put out my call. Um, and that is one of, one of the most impressive things that I think we do as a community is that we emerge. We evolve and we emerge, right? We're, we're like, like Fox was saying, we're consistently changing. We're consistently evolving. And we, I think, do it spectacularly well within our communities. And we're going to continue, right? So one of the things that Dana Boyd, um, who is a scientist, a sociologist scientist at Microsoft, said that it was actually the black community that kept the smartphone alive because of our use of the sidekick. Right? So, so while everyone else wanted like razor, like flip phones, we, we had sidekicks, right? We, so, so we're, we're early adapters, right? Um, and, and this creates a space to allow us to emerge nationwide, if not worldwide. And one of the things, I mean, th this last thing that you showed, Brother around my like I was like, imagine if we could do this, right? Imagine if we could do this for Cincinnati, for Cleveland, Detroit. for Detroit. Right for LA, for the jungle in LA versus West Hollywood, right? I mean, like, like we could do a whole lot of stuff. And again, you, we don't need to go into a studio, right? We, we, we can create this technology within our house, within our home. Um, and, and I think that that's also philosophically um, a, a theme that we want to remember. So I say all that to say that at the end of the day, we are moving into a technologically based society and we are moving more and more into a mobile society so what companies like cisco systems are working on right now is like or, and it's already here but it was new to me is bring your own device right so like you see it in the commercials where the guy goes from watching the tv to watching his thing to watching his phone to watch you know like soon you're that, that's how you're going to be operating and it's really just going to be one device that you take around and becomes your computer and becomes so your phone like, I, mean, I don't get that device. um so so where so where are tech you know like how now you have 
like a laptop, you have a cell phone, you have a tablet, it's all going to become a little smaller than this. And it's going to be all in one. And it's going to be able to do everything. So you'll be able to put it in a docking station and have it be your computer when you go to work. You know, like, oh, shit. like and, 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 and actually, like, the, the Cisco, and the only, the, the reason why I know a little bit more about this is because my, um, my stepfather is an engineer at Cisco, so um, years and years ago, he was telling me about, like, this, that we're going to be able to watch each other when we call each other on the phone. And I was like, whatever, can I just get a pager? Yeah. Because, <laughs> like, that was the technology. Like, literally, he was opening up the Cisco office in Hawaii, and I was like, whatever, can I get a pager? I was like, whatever, phone, oh, whatever. You know? Um, and, but now when he talks, I'm like, tell me more, Bob. Tell me more. Um, so, you know, so what, so does that make sense, Kenny, about bring your own device? So it, ma it makes everything interchangeable. Um, and, and it's going to be a lot easier um, in, in that way. Um, I, I did a talk um, at MIT called um, Technologists Are From Mars and Organizers Are From Venus. Um, and 